just after 6 a.m. Next stop we're gonna do here is a place called Cafe Ganin. Uh, this is a coffee plantation. Uh, the owner of the establishment here has an agro-tourism industry that's happening and a full farm immersion experience that's happening. We're gonna learn all about coffee this morning. Pigeon? What's the difference between a wood pigeon and a regular pigeon? Wood pigeons taste delicious. What do you ask? And this gem of a woman is Queenie Loxon, the proprietor of Cafe Gani. She left her corporate job 15 years ago to pursue her passion for Liberica coffee beans. Despite operating at a loss, she is dedicated to preserving this rare coffee bean, and currently neither the farms nor the cafe turn a profit. Queenie, tell me about the Liberica beans. I've never heard of this before. Like, I've heard of Arabica and Robusta. I love coffee. I've never even heard of this bean. Yeah. First off, Jeff, uh, good day and welcome to the farm. Here in the Philippines, we grow four varieties. So we have um, Liberica, Robusta, Arabica, and Salsa. The first known coffee that brought Philippine to the coffee industry worldwide is Liberica. So we have grown these seeds back in Batangas. The mother tree of this came from Batangas. I have to ship it to a plant and plant it there. This specific plantation is already a product of my Aklan farm. Liberica mainly is one of the most rarest coffee in the world. And here in the Philippines, there's a mandate as much as possible to propagate the tree, to preserve the endangered species that we have, because this is an endangered species already. So it is our advocacy, me and my family, my father-in-law, to preserve the, the tree. And uh, among the varieties that we grow here in the Philippines, this is the future of coffee, Jeff, because uh, this is the most resilient coffee tree amongst the variety. It can withstand extreme weather conditions, uh, especially here, as yes, you can see, it's an open field. And uh, coffee is known to be a shaded uh, crop as much as possible. And this tree can last you up to 100 years. As long as you know how to prune and rejuvenate the tree, it can last you long. This specific tree can withstand insects or pesticides. Here at the farm, as much as possible, we try to offer a traceable, quality, and sustainable bean. Traceable because you know where it's coming from. You know, you know the environment. If you want a good quality bean, you need to have a good uh, environment, terroir, good weather. And we try to grow the tree organically as much as possible. We are very strict on that to, to get that quality cup of coffee. How much uh, space do you have here at this particular plantation? Here currently I have 5.72 uh, hectares. I have um, around 6,168 trees in the area and I'm looking for expansion. Okay, and you were telling me earlier the watering process mm. as of right now. Mm. What? Explain <laughs> to me again exactly. Currently, the water system here is just a main deep well attached with several hoses on it and a water reservoir. And then we would uh, just water the trees um, manually by the bucket. That so, must take a long time. <laughs> yeah, it would take a long time. So I would go here every morning like 4 a.m. and um, I would uh, start up the, the deep well and start to water the plant and I would end up around 8 a.m. So I get to flower like 50 trees around that time. So I would give the trees two buckets. 50 so, trees from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. so four hours and how many trees did you say you had? Oh, it's 6,000. 6,000 and, and you can get 50 out in a day because you least, have to do them by hand. I get to have 50, yeah, by so hand. I guess that's the, the longer term goal here is to try yeah. and get a proper irrigation yes, system. Yes. But the, 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 the longer, uh, the, the long term goal for this is really to have a drip system because that's really the right uh, water irrigation for coffee trees. So we're saving up for it. So Queenie, you've started 
an agro-tourism thing happening here at your farm. What exactly happens during that tour or... Yeah, what, we, uh, when I started the plantation here in Dulao, Bago City, this is mainly an experimental farm for an open plantation because we already have the shaded one in the plant. And in order for us to augment the income when there is no harvest season, uh, I opened it up for agritourism. So what I do here, um, we are open for farm immersion, farm tour. I teach them from seed bed, tree transplanting, tree planting, coffee processing, and then brewing. Uh, it's an end-to-end -end process. There are those also who would ask for the business side. I discussed that also on a separate um, session. But normally, that's what I do. And I would love to encourage the academe because as much as possible, we want to disseminate the information to really pl plant this endangered species. So the place is open for birthdays, wedding. I have here prenuptial photo shoots, garden wedding. Birthdays, you can, they can rent the place. They can all rent yeah. the place out. Yeah. Not open for just walk-in customers. No. Yeah, we're it's not open for walk-ins. For... After the harvesting, of course, you have to put them in a large bucket. And that's where you select the good bean and the bad bean. This is how we do the depulping here. Eventually, I hope we can afford the depulper. <laughs> and we press them. It has have a little bit of pressure so as not also to you have to be careful also so you will not crack the beans because if not it will be rejected and it will create a lot of sourness and bitterness to the bean this is the parchment level of the coffee bean so in one cherry you have two pods there are those we call pea berries it's just one pod in a cherry and that's very rare. Actually, it's an anomaly in the development of the, of the cherry. So there's a technique here. It should be, they should be in the same sizes because if not, and the right amount of pressure. Okay. So we do this before, if we harvest like 300 kilos, we do this. So you would sit there with just yeah. the three press, you'd have three people set up and they're yeah. Yeah, and do the How long would it take to get 300 kilos? Uh, normally four days. Four days. <laughs> and is that like a, a standard rule there? Like I saw you there each time, like you're putting four uh, of the really. cherries. It depends on how strong you are. It depends on to how you can, you, you can control the pressure that you want. So this is the natural process. It's skin on. It's just being dried out in the sun but for us here I use a solar dryer so as not to infuse uh, bit bitterness and sourness to the beans so I dry them uh, at the solar dryer it takes about one to two months to dry them and then we also have the natural the, the washed process and the honey process so we do that here uh, we also have aerobic and anaerobic process Anaerobic is the fermentation without the presence of oxygen. So we put them in a closed jar and ferment it there without oxygen. Aerobic is the presence of oxygen, so we just put them in the jar. It can be open. And then when this is dried already, this one it gets around one to two weeks to dry in the solar dryer. We don't expose them to sun so it will not create a bitter and sour bean for liberica <clears throat> after this you will dehull this is no hardcore pounding okay just grind on the side so you will not crack the green bean inside you just have your objective here is to expose the green bean out of its shell so okay you know, okay so I'm a little bit I'm of grinding a I'm little gonna, bit of i'm gonna try you tell me if i'm doing it right or wrong <laughs> yes yes a little bit of pounding but very very uh, less pressure and then a little bit of grinding like that. I'll put some more so that you can there and then grind them to the sides just yes. to expose the bean. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, very good. Sorry, 
I don't know. So what, I can save up on salary, Jeff. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't know what finished is though. Just when, just when you see the right amount of green beans there, then you lift it up I, later, and then you're gonna win. I can I'm not even sure no, what no, I'm no. looking at here. Yeah, yeah, here, here, queenie, queenie. here. So queenie. Yeah. Can you sh show us how we know that it's done? If you have exposed the green bean already. So ah, uh, so yeah, you no, will be able me. to see the green bean popping up. Later. So right now you see all the shells in the hall, and then what we're looking yeah. for is Some that. Some are exposed. Oh already. yeah, we see. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's cracking. It's popping out of the shell. Yeah, I see okay. it. Good. So Queenie has told me I can't leave yeah. until this is done. I have to finish this thing. Now the problem is I don't know what finished is. Really. Okay. Next. Just finish this up so we have something to win on. Oh, did I quit too soon? Yeah, you quit too soon. <laughs> I did a bad job. Yeah, I'll just pay you uh, prorated. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just pay you 30 minutes, Jeff. Yep. Okay, I quit on Queenie here on, <laughs> on doing the mortar and pestle. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious here, like... You're doing all of this by hand. So when you have 300 kilos from a harvest, how long does this process take? Months. <laughs> really? Yeah. But here they're an expert already. So they can like finish 50 kilograms in one day. And then you have to do like that. You separate the hull from the green bean. And then you have the green beans now. Good job, Jeff. It's all whole beans, no cracked beans. So this is how we separate the hull from the green bean. So we have the green beans now. So it's whole. We set, we sort our beans. So if it has cracked like this, we don't sell them anymore. We just use them for personal use. Like this one, we don't sell them anymore. And we have to sort it by sizes as well. I don't know what a roaster does. I've never done this before. Yeah, so it's just going around like... Just a, yeah. Just a little child share. Right? <laughs> yes. yeah. And then just... So what, you just keep stirring it around? Keep stirring it until it gets brown. And how long does that process normally take? <laughs> Sometimes 15 minutes. For that, it's just around 15 minutes. All right, so what Queenie's done here for me is this one that you see here. Uh, that's the one that I attempted to help with and did a horrible job at. Uh, that's the freshly ground one. She's just, uh, we grinded it up. She's gonna brew a cup of coffee out of that. The other one that she has here, what she's saying is, is that normally what happens is after they're freshly roasted, they would gas off for three days, uh, release some of the CO2 in them. So we're gonna do a side-by-side -side taste test of something that has already been, the CO2's been gassed off of, and a fresh roast. Okay, so these are the two cups of coffee. Uh, this one here is the one that I did the very poor job of helping with, and this one here is Queenie's production that has had the CO2 gassed off of it for a few days, and we are gonna try each of them. 
I'm going to start with the one that I just brewed because I'm kind of proud of my bad work that I did. This is very familiar to me, but I want to see what the other one tastes like here. Oh, that's good. All right, this is Queenie's production. Okay, the one that's freshly roasted, you get this bitterness, which is I'm actually familiar with. Uh, it has a, it's a very smooth flavor, but there is a lot of bitterness that follows along with it. The one that Queenie's produced that's been gassed off, the CO2's been gassed off of it, it's very smooth. It's, there's no, uh, if you're familiar with most coffees, a, a dark roast especially, you'll end up getting this bitterness to it. This, nothing at all. It is extremely smooth, a very pleasant taste left in your mouth to where the freshly brewed that's happening here, you get a little bit of the bitterness with it, but still with a beautiful flavor. They're good. Coffees are good. I'm gonna have to order your coffee and carry it around with me now. All right, this has been an amazing experience out here at Cafe Ganin. If you are interested in coming for the agritourism, if you're here in Bacolod, I will leave a link for them down below. As we made our way back to Bacola from Cafe Ganin, Martin suggested we stop off at a little eatery for our late lunch. Alright, so where we are right now is at a place called Kyle's Eatery. This is definitely a place you are not going to find on the tourist trail. And I'm going to try a bunch of dishes that they have here. Okay, first thing I'm gonna try here is the pancit molo, which is a soup type thing. It's got uh, some meat dumplings in here and a rich appearing thick broth. Let's give it a shot. Oh, that's super savory. It's so hot. All right, this is the palabok. It's tasty. It's a filling thing. It's extremely inexpensive. At 50 pesos, can't go wrong with that. So this is like the chorizo sandwich, chorizo clubhouse sandwich. It's got like a, uh, a patty of chorizo meat, Filipino chorizo, so it's a bit sweetish and then you've got like an egg omelette in it and some of Kyle's uh, sordo, sordo bread. So it's a very filling meal, it's good for two people actually, that is what I have most of the time. And Jeff here is going to try it. I was a little scared when he said the Filipino chorizo sandwich, it, so it's a little sweet. This is very satisfying. The chorizo here is fantastic. It's not overwhelmingly sweet. Actually has a slight savoriness to it as well. It's very nice. All right, next one up here is tocino. And we've got some rice here, we've got some egg, and then you get these beautiful little pieces of a cured pork. Usually slight, slightly sweet, not the first time I've had this, but let's give John's, or sorry, Kyle's a try. This tocino is good. I've got to get just a piece of that. All the other tocinos that I've had have been relatively sweet. This is much more mild. This is. Probably one of the better ones that I've had. This is good. No. All right, one more bite. I've got to stop because I've got to eat other food. Mm. 
So people are just like... I'm good. People are throwing stuff at Jeff. People are feeding Jeff so much. Alright, I'm going to try just a piece of the chicken, dip it in a little bit of the sauce here. Oh wow! It's deep fried and the chicken still stays extremely juicy. You get a nice crust on the outside of it from a deep fry. And it's amazing. Alright, I want one more piece of this. I want this chili. Good. That, I'm gonna grab a little bit of the achata. We have the chili, some chicken. Oh yeah, that is good. Kyle's a genius. The dude's an absolute genius. All right, I just wanted to take just a minute here. I had no intention to do in this. My intention was to come and grab a little bit of food and go. Tried so many different things here. This place is absolutely amazing. I wanted to take just a second to introduce you guys to Kyle. Uh, Kyle is 29 years old and he is knocking it out of the park here. Kyle, can you tell me just quickly a little bit about the history? Yes, uh, I started uh, when I was 18. I'm interested in cooking and because it's already a small eatery when we started. So, yeah. All right, after all that food there, we are going to finish it off. Kyle keeps surprising us with stuff. We got another hollow hollow. So just for the sake of making a couple of you angry, I'm still not mixing it. All right, let's try it. I was recently taught how to do this. So let's see if I can actually do it. All right, here we go. Little chocolate wafers of some kind, almost like a cookie crisp, like a little cereal. I think Hollow Hollow is just gonna be one of those things that no matter how old you are, it's still gonna be tasty. I continue doing what my mom's. What your mom taught you? Yeah. Join me next week as Lorraine rejoins Martin and I to sample delicious sweets at one of Bacola's renowned bakeries. Also, I'll be introduced to another talented young entrepreneur who's making a mark in the food industry in the city of smiles. Don't miss a minute by subscribing and turning on those notifications.